Welcome back friends, this is Professor John Gallagher, and in this video we're going to perform our first breadboard work with the Raspberry Pi. And while learning how to get info on Pi pinouts, we're also going to become pushy Pi Pythonistas as we learn to connect a push button to our Raspberry Pi. We'll use the debouncing library that can prevent common problems when accurately detecting and responding to a button push, so we'll learn to install the CircuitPython debouncer library on a Raspberry Pi, and we'll show how to build a cheer machine that can cheer you on at the press of a button whenever you need an audio pick-me-up. Yay! So let's push forward, my perpetually persistent programmers, before I alliterate again. First, let me show you how we're going to wire up our button. Now, I'm using a breadboard here, and these two wiring schemes are equivalent. This one goes directly from ground to one button leg, and the buttons have no polarity, so either leg is fine, just as long as the signal pin is on the opposite side in the left-right direction, top or bottom doesn't matter. And this one here has ground wiring heading into the rail, where current flows horizontally along the row when the board is in this orientation. And this other wire goes from the ground rail to the column in this orientation. And remember, all columns are vertically connected, so the ground is going right into this pin here. But if you have an arcade-style button like one of these, and if you've connected the terminals on the button using Quick Connect wire, you can connect that wire to a socket pin jumper wire and connect the sockets directly to the Pi's pins. Now, what pins am I attaching to? Unfortunately, there aren't good pinout labels on the Raspberry Pi, but there's a great site that I always have up in my browser when I'm wiring my Pi, and that's at pinout.xyz. So feel free to explore this site. It's interactive. The legend down here shows where the orientation of the Pi is to be able to find these pins on your board. So this assumes that you're holding your Pi this way with the pins on the right-hand side. You can see the pins are highlighted when you move your cursor on top of them. Now in my diagram, the third pin down on the outermost row is where I've wired ground. And if I click it, I can see the other ground pins are highlighted. Very cool. Now my signal is wired to pin GPIO23. And if I click it, I see some alternate name schemes will ignore all of that. But GPIO stands for General Purpose Input Output. And that's where we want to be because buttons are digital inputs. Also in CircuitPython on the Raspberry Pi, when we see a pin like GPIO23, we'll refer to that as board.d23. Now this tab along the top shows you how you can quickly get information on specific kinds of pins. For example, click I2C for I squared C, and you see the pins highlighted for I squared C. GPIO2 is good for data, GPIO3 is good for clock. And you also get lots of handy information. For example, here's information on the commands you can enter to find out the addresses of your I squared C devices. So do explore this resource on your own. It's super handy. Remember that's at pinout.xyz. Now, if you followed our earlier videos, we covered debouncing in a video titled, Help, My Button Doesn't Work. And in that, we pointed out that many tutorials will show you how you can read a button state by examining the button's dot value property, but we often want to clearly tell when a button is first pressed or released and not continue to report more presses when a finger is down on a button. So that's why we use the debouncing technique. Debouncing helps us clearly recognize a button state when pressed or released one at a time and avoid the multiple presses that can register when you use button dot value. If you want more information on debouncing, you can go back and watch that earlier video where we covered this topic in depth when we wrote code for CircuitPython on microcontrollers. But to cut to the chase, when we want to use debouncing, we say import debouncer from Adafruit underscore debouncer. That adds the CircuitPython debouncing commands to Python. We declare our button like this, first creating a digital in out object on the signal pin for our button. And remember, we use board.d23 for GPIO pin 23. Then we switch to input because our button is a digital input. And I had suggested when setting up buttons that we should use the internal pull-up resistor. We could use a pull-down resistor, but pull-up is often preferred from a wiring perspective. We'll see it's also easy to read in our code because we can detect a button is pressed when button.fell equals true. I think it's mentally easy to think of button.fell being button is being pushed. And then we create a debouncer object, passing in the button input that we created. We can see that I named my button button, very original. And then when we want to check a button, first we call the button's update method. And then with a pull-up resistor, when button.fell is true, that means the button has been pushed. And when button.rows is true, that means it's been released. Now, if I used a pull-down resistor, then those would be opposite. Rows would mean pushed and fell would mean released. And so now that we've reviewed this, I'm going to give a challenge to those who have followed our earlier videos and have already written code using the debouncing techniques. But first, I want to show everyone how to install new CircuitPython libraries and modules on a Raspberry Pi. So on the Pi, we don't drag files and folders into the lib folder like we do with microcontrollers. Instead, we use the pip tool to install new libraries. So let's head over to the terminal. I'm going to assume at this point you know how to log into your Raspberry Pi, see earlier videos if you need help setting this up. And even though our library is named Adafruit underscore debouncer, we enter a command like this, pip install Adafruit dash circuit Python dash debouncer. So circuit Python is in the middle and we don't use underscores, we use dashes. Now a quick tip, 
The command to install libraries or modules is usually in the documentation for the library in the readthedocs.io site. If you haven't visited this site, it's where you can get the information on all the different libraries in CircuitPython. Here's what this looks like for the Adafruit NeoPixel library. You can usually find Python installation commands under a heading like installing from PyPy. Now, unfortunately, at the time that I'm recording this video, the read the docs information is missing information on how to install Adafruit underscore debouncer on a Raspberry Pi. But do know that in most cases, if you can't guess the right format right away using the install command, you can usually check the documentation at readthedocs.io. Also, while the instructions here show pip3, the latest version of Raspberry Pi uses pip3 by default. So you can just say pip if your Pi software is up to date, and that's what you'll see me using. So after you've typed in this command exactly as you see it here, you can press return. And remember, sometimes it seems like your Pi has stalled. Just be patient. It should eventually go ahead and install the files. Mine took about two to three minutes. So after this is installed, I'm going to clear my screen and I'll show you the challenge if you want to follow this. And if this is new to you, don't worry. We'll show a solution right after this. This challenge is to build a cheer machine so you can give yourself a pick me up on demand. And it'll work like this. When you press a button, one of two things will happen. If no sound is playing, then the next sound will play. But if a sound is playing, that sound will be stopped. And when you get to the last sound, we'll start over again from the first sound. So here's an example. Now you can download the files from a folder named cheer underscore sounds from the URL that contains our series help files. That's bit.ly slash circuitpython school files. Put those in your Raspberry Pi's user directory. If you're connected to your Pi over Wi-Fi, earlier videos showed how you can copy the files over on a Mac. And if you're a Windows user, you can copy files over using a tool like WinSCP. And two hints on commands that may help. You can tell that music is playing in Pygame with the method pygame.mixer.music.get underscore busy. And when that's equal to true, the music is playing. When it's not, there's no music playing. And you can stop music from playing with the method pygame.mixer.music.stop. So if you think you can, why don't you pause and give this a try? And when you're ready, let's resume and compare answers. So why don't you get your cheer sounds, open a browser, and head over to bit.ly slash circuitpython school files, then right click cheer sounds, select download. My Mac asks me where I want to save, I'm going to save them to the desktop. If your computer doesn't ask you where you want to save, it's probably saving to the downloads folder. Then minimize your browser. My Pi's hostname is built with prof G. I'm already connected, but if you weren't connected on the Mac, you'd press command K to connect to server. You can also find that under the go menu then select connect to server. The connection command you type in is AFP colon slash slash with your host name dot local. My students on campus don't use the dot local. Click connect and you're in. And here I am in my Pi's home directory. This is the Pi directory. So I'm going to drag my cheer sounds over and plop them into my Pi directory. Oh, I'm getting an error here. This sometimes happens. I'm going to delete this folder and try again. Otherwise, you can disconnect, even try restarting your Pi or restarting your computer. But everything should eventually work fine if you set things up like we did in the previous video. If you look in this folder, you should find that there are six sounds labeled sound 0 through sound 5. I'm going to minimize these windows, and I'm going to open up Moo. Remember, this message shows up when we work with the Raspberry Pi because we're not directly connected to the Pi, and we don't run the REPL and Moo. And so let's write our cheer machine. So let's import board time pi game digital io and we import our debouncer with from adafruit underscore debouncer import capital d debouncer then we'll set up our debounced button so first we'll set up the button input button underscore input equals digital io dot digital in out that's with a capital d capital i capital o and then in between parentheses we're going to pass in the pin number that we're using board dot d23 for gpio pin 23 on a raspberry pi then we'll say button underscore input dot switch underscore two underscore input, passing in pull equals digital IO dot capital P pull dot up in all caps. And that's vitally important. That sets the internal pull up resistor. We talked about this in an earlier video, and we mentioned that fortunately most boards have a built in pull up and pull down resistor, so we don't have to use a physical resistor for the button. Then we'll declare our debounced button as button, setting that equal to capital D debouncer, passing in the button underscore input that we just created. 
Then we'll create a path so that our program knows where to find our files, and we'll set that path variable equal to, in double quotes, slash home slash pi slash cheer underscore sounds, and the slash at the end makes sure that we go in the cheers sounds directory. Then we'll initialize our pi game with pi game dot mixer dot init, open and close parens, and then most of the time when we access our pi game mixer music, we write it like this. But to save three words, we can just say music equals pi game dot mixer dot music, and then refer to music in the rest of our code. So let's set our speed volume, I'll declare a variable speaker underscore volume and set that equal to 0 0.5. Then we'll say music dot set underscore and then pass in speaker volume. You might notice I made an error here and I left this in to show you how we can identify and fix errors when our CircuitPython programs run on the Raspberry Pi. Then I'm going to set a variable sound underscore number and set that equal to 0. This is the current sound file number. And we'll also declare a variable to hold the total number of sounds, total underscore sounds equals 6. And then in our while true loop, first we call button update open and close parens. So this is going to check the status of the debounced button state. Remember button.fell is true when it's pressed, button.rose is true when it's not pressed. And if button.fell, colon, that's going to check to see if the button was pressed. Then we want to check to see if the music is playing. And if it is, we'll stop it. So we check to see if the music is playing by checking if music.get underscore busy, open and close parens, equals equals true, colon. But we don't need to say equals equals true because get busy returns a true or false. So we can just cut out the equal equals true because we know we'll either get true or false. And under this, if the music is playing, we want to stop the music. And to do that, we say music.stop open and close parens. Else, on the next line, colon, we want to go ahead and load our music and then play it. So we do that with music.load, and then we pass in between parentheses, path, plus, and then put in double quotes here. And remember, our sounds are all named sound 012345.mp3. So I'm going to type in sound, open and close curlies, dot mp3. And then after the double quotes, I'm going to use the format method, which we learned about in an earlier video, to convert the number to a string that I put in between the curlies. And in between parentheses, sound underscore number. Make sure you've got the extra paren at the end. Then we say music.play, open and close parens. That plays the sound we just loaded. And we increase our sound number by one with sound underscore number, plus plus equals one. That's the same as sound number equals sound number plus one. Now remember, if we're at our last sound number, then we want to go back to the first sound number, which is sound zero. So we'll say if sound underscore number greater than or equal to total underscore sounds, colon. If that's true, we set sound underscore number equal to zero. And you know what? Why don't I add a print statement up here right under L so we can see what we're printing out. I'll say print and in parentheses, quotes, playing colon, and then I'll use the code that I wrote down here. Sound curly braces dot mp3, close double quote dot format, and in parentheses sound underscore number. Make sure you got the extra paren at the end. Then let's save this. Make sure you save it to your Pi directory. Why don't we call this cheer machine? Then let's go back to our terminal. Remember, we're still logged into our Pi, and we're going to execute this code by typing in Python space. And as I start to type in cheer underscore m, then I can tab because there's nothing that's named cheer underscore m. It fills in the rest of the text, cheer machine dot Pi, press return. And oh no, there's the error. Remember the error in our code? It says that our Pi program has an error in line 16, and it points out line 16. But as I'd mentioned in an earlier CircuitPython school video, oftentimes the error isn't spotted on the line. It might be on the line above. So let's go take a look at our code. And line 16 is looking pretty good. But oh, if we look just above this on line 14, we can see the culprit. I actually forgot to include the closing parenthesis when I set up music.setVolume. So let me add that closing parenthesis. Remember, you've got to resave your work, so I'll click the save. Save button, then I can press the up arrow, which re-enters the last command that I typed into the terminal. Press return. My code is running. I don't have any errors. By the way, whenever you run a program with a Pi game module in it, you'll always see this hello from Pi game community message. So let's take a look at our Raspberry Pi and start pressing buttons. Make sure your speaker is on. Yeah. Well, Coder, you clearly deserve all those cheers and more. You had another lesson of big learning. We learned how to identify Raspberry Pi pinouts using pinout XYZ. We learned to import CircuitPython libraries to the Raspberry Pi. We now know how to find import commands for those libraries using readthedocs.io. 
we worked with button to bouncing, we used Pygame to check if a sound is playing, and we learned to stop a sound if it is playing. So keep cheering, Python peeps. Please let me know if you like this lesson. Hearing from you definitely keeps me motivated. Remember, if you tweet a video or a pic of your build with the hashtag builtwithpropg, you might be chosen for a completely free Happy Gear Make Something Awesome laptop sticker. And stay tuned to our channel and playlists. There's more goodness to come.